Forgive Me Father 2 is finally here in early access. It launched on October 19th and I was pretty excited to jump in after covering the demo a few weeks earlier. So did it hold up to my expectations? Is it your typical half-baked early access title or is there more to the story here? Let's find out. Quick disclaimer, I never played the original game, so I can't speak on any improvements made in its sequel. But generally, I've seen comments saying it's like Forgive Me Father, but a bit better, more polished, etc. What I can speak on is how it feels to play and whether or not I enjoyed it. First, the overall vibes. This inky comic style looks fantastic and crisp the whole way through and just meshes perfectly with this nightmarish theme. Each level has its own color palette and distinct feel. Sometimes you're out under the open night sky or making your way through cramped tunnels. There are grandiose high ceilinged cathedrals, dingy basements, and a few spots that even feel cozy. How does it feel to blast through hordes of enemies in each of these locations? Pretty damn satisfying. Forgive Me Father 2 is a shooter with some weight to it, and the gore animations help signal to you that every shot counts and each one is doing some serious damage. Things are a bit on the slower side of the FPS spectrum. You have to think about when and where you reload as you insert each bullet individually. Your character can jump, but definitely isn't a superhuman acrobat. These things keep the game feeling somewhat grounded, as unrealistic as its graphics and subject matter are. All in all, I enjoyed the gunplay and am looking forward to continuing fighting off more enemy types in new locations using an expanded set of weapons and skills. Something I'm not quite as sold on is the level variety. Some of them are just way better than others. There are 10 levels total, but 4 of them feel pretty similar two set in World War one styled trenches and battlefields, and the other two in this underground, abandoned tunnel area. The tunnel levels were fine, if unimaginative, but I really didn't like the war levels. It almost felt too realistic, if that makes sense. Just kind of boring. I think the game shines best in large buildings like the villa and the sanctuary, places where there are tons of floors and staircases, twisting corridors, gardens, and courtyards. Working your way through these types of levels requires some backtracking and key finding, occasionally making me lose my bearings, and wander around looking for the door I was supposed to unlock. But I like that kind of stuff. If you're more a fan of completely linear levels, the game has some of that too. And I'm really hoping they're saving some of their most special levels for last because they could totally do something really cool with this whole setting and theme. So do I recommend you play the game in early access? If you plan on getting it at some point eventually, I think it's definitely worth jumping in now. I ran into zero bugs or issues, and it was a great game to play on a spooky October evening. But if you want more content first, or are just on the fence, no harm in waiting. As of right now, the game takes less than two hours to play through. I definitely don't think you'll be disappointed by the actual game though, especially if it looks like something that's up your alley. Now I want to talk about Bite Barrel's early access plans. Their estimated time frame for full release is at the end of 2024. It seems like the 10 levels available now make up Act 1, with 3 other acts currently in development. There will be 3 content updates before the full release, which will include new levels, weapons, skills, and enemies. The full release will bring us a finalized story complete with voice acting, new game plus, various different localizations, collectibles, and more. There's no set schedule for any of these updates, but based on the late 2024 release window, it seems like they'll come out about every 3-4 to four months. Even though I didn't play the original Forgive Me Father, its sequel already has a higher Steam review score, if that means anything to you, and I'm looking forward to exploring this weird and wacky world whenever the next update comes out. Until then, you might also enjoy hearing me talk about some of these other games.